Welcome to Season 10 of Regen Rovers, where this year we will be competing in League One, the third tier of English football. And as usual, we're predicted to finish bottom of the table, 650 to 1 to win the league. Get your bets in now, because I know plenty of you are rich after our magnificent campaign in League 2. Please, can you give us some money? We're in debt still. 401 grand in debt right now. But I'm hoping we can get more people through the doors and we can improve the financial situation of the club. I did warn you guys that quite a few players would be leaving the club in the summer. Legends, icons, great servants of Regen Rovers. Marcus Higgins has gone. Club captain until the day he left. Legend, 200 appearances for the club over, what, seven seasons in total, I think. Sorry to see him go. His contract ran out and the amount of money he wanted, because we're in League One, some of the players kind of feel like they deserve a bit more money and it just didn't make sense to give him a new contract the amount of money that he wanted so I hope he finds a new club he is a club icon I assume he's still on the club icon list after leaving he is with Mark Ball and Samuel Assini oh Morgan Fawkes has dropped off it's now only Agu and Alec McCann on the favourite person now Alec McCann is still at Ross County by the way I don't think he's actually good enough for League One in my opinion I think Mark Ball and Ryan Curtis are better strikers but Great memories of him, of course. Our second top goal scorer ever, Paul McCann, has left the club. I'm quite sad about this one. He made, I think, over 250 appearances for the club, scoring 91 goals in all competitions. But yes, yet again, along with Marcus Higgins, he just wanted a bit too much money for him, for me to keep him in the reserves. He's, he's you know, like seventh, eighth choice striker these days. Elliot Everson has also gone, scored, I think, 53 goals in all competitions for us. His best season was the year we got promoted from the National League. Without him, we wouldn't have been promoted to the Football League. 31 goals that season. That was really his only good year for us, but yeah. Brilliant memories from that season, of course. And Luke Mooney. Remember the year when he scored 31 goals in the Southern Premier South to get as... I think he... Did he get as promoted that year? Possibly. Either way, uh, one phenomenal season for us. Then he went to crew. He came back. Didn't... Wasn't able to relive those glory days, unfortunately. And he has been released as well. Raphael Godwin. So many appearances for the club. So many appearances. But he has gone as well. He's dropped down the pecking order and he just wanted a bit too much money for me to keep him. Especially as we don't play lots of central midfielders now. I don't think it made sense. I don't think he's good enough for League One either. But we'll keep an eye on these players. More often than not, these players leave and they just retire. They don't, they're not willing to drop down a couple of divisions. It's very strange. They, sh they should be willing to do that and play on. But no, they, most of the players that have left the club in the series have retired. A few other notable players to leave. Ken Norman, O'Shaughnessy from last year who we signed, Kieran Law who we signed last year. A few others have left as well. If we just look at the squad, I'll show you the new transfers in a second. But that is the first team squad right now. You'll see a few names there. The under-23 squad has certainly shrunk. We've still got Ray Rigg. We've still got Sean Walker. We've still got Oga Chikwagu. We've still got Morgan Fawkes. Most of these players are willing to play on uh, as non-contracted players. I'm hoping Agu does, because if he does want to leave, then I think I'll just offer him a new contract, because he's actually like fourth or fifth choice striker for us. We have hung on to Mark Cole, you'll see. Um, he had an automatic one-year extension onto his contract. And the under-18s, not many players these days, because I'm just I'm not signing players, because we want to save as much money as possible. I am spending well under the wage budget, as you can see, a 20 grand. 20.6 grand, we've got 28.8 grand a, a week to spend. Transfer budget, that will be all the bonuses and things at the end of the season. We're still in debt, we're still not making enough money, but I'm hoping in League One we'll get a few more people through the door. You'll see pre-season wise, plenty of people turned up for quite a few games. Our rivals against Winchester City, a uh, good win against Shrivenham. Everton, we only lost 2-0, lots of people turned up for that. 4-1 win, 1-1 draw against Dagenham Redbridge. I did a little cup competition here, which we lost on penalties against Kettering after a cracking 3-3 draw. 3-3 draw against Southampton, phenomenal stuff. Team from just down the road, loads of people turned up for that. 
full capacity stadium. Newcastle as well, lots of people turned up for that 1-0 defeat. Our first game of the season will be today against Exeter City. So after some sad news, let's focus on the positives the players that have come into the team to improve the squad. Now, I'll be honest, I don't think this transfer window is good as last year's, but we've still got that core. We've still got Mark Ball, Ryan Curtis, Toby Brazil. We've hung on to our best players, I think. And I've tried to improve the defense, but getting players to join us has been impossible. There's a lot of players that I've tried to go for uh, that have rejected me. I don't think it shows them all here, but there's a lot of centre-backs that I went through from Championship and Premier League teams on loan. None of them wanted to join. They just see me as such a lowly team. Still only one and a half star reputation, despite the fact we're now up to League One. If we just look at our reputation in England and scroll down a bit here, we're a long way down. We're all the way down here. A League One team with one and a half star reputation. We're with the National League teams. It's not great. So players don't want to join us. It's been difficult, but I shouldn't make too many excuses, should I? But I, I am. I'm making excuses. So the first player to join Regen Rovers in the summer. Great name. Love it. Joey Curry. Centre back. Of course, I need to improve the centre back positions. He's, he's come on a free. He was released by Liverpool. But he's willing to join Regen Rovers. I think he's all right. I think he's probably our best centre back alongside Lucas Long on paper. Have a close look because after I've shown you the transfers, I'll ask you who's your favourite signing as always. Tom Storey is going to be our third choice goalkeeper. He's not very good, I'll be honest. But he's only 18 years old and he's basically just in case Okoro and Shea Skinner get injured. So he's joined. He was released by Shrewsbury. Keneal Passmore. Great name. He's only got eight on passing though. Uh, three star uh, current ability. Got a bit of potential. He's been released by Arsenal now. He's a right back. I didn't really need to improve the right back position, I don't think. But now that Marcus Higgins is gone, well, we've, we've got options there, that's for sure. We've got Hancock, who technically is our best right back, according to my assistant, and Passmore, and Sammy Wassini. There are options. And Ben Ball in the under 23s. Next up was Ben Patton. Welshman coming in from Cardiff Met University, signed him on a free and he's actually going to drop into the under 23s and be our third choice left winger behind Wes Honor and a new player. Now he's up next and he is the best player that we have signed but also the most expensive player that we have ever signed, not in terms of the transfer fee but in terms of his contract. It is huge compared to what we have been paying. He's only 18 years old and he's Dutch. We've not really signed many players from outside the UK. We've got Passmore, he's Jamaican, coming in. And now we've got John Pat uh, Patinama, who looks good. He's, he's fairly fast, good acceleration, good natural fitness. He's, he's good, he's, he's average, he's good for this level. 10 crossing, 10 dribbling, decent first touch technique, work rate's all right, teamwork's all right. He's not exceptional, but he certainly has potential. Released also by Liverpool, but his contract is huge. And we had to pay. I mean, the reason why I couldn't sign more players was a lot of players that were willing to join and be key players wanted like five grand a week. This guy is on 2.8 grand a week, which is still so much for us. The next highest earning player is Ryan Curtis on 1.6 grand a week. So to... to I've given so much trust it to John Patanama here. I'm expecting big things from the left wing from him because if he doesn't perform, then it's essentially a waste of money. It's a three-year contract as well. I think it rises every year. You know, I I really stuck my neck out for him, and if he doesn't repay me, he's going to be in trouble. And the last player to join is a player on loan. Or, I, I think the transfer window ends soon. I don't know if I'm going to get anyone else here, but I like this though. Jonathan Pheasant. Uh, and he's come on loan from Notts County, a fellow League One team. Just to, I mean, if we can't find a centre back partnership between all of the players that we have now Joey, Joey Curry, Lucas Long, Kevin Casey still at the club, Matthew Averson still at the club, and Jonathan Pheasant, if we can't find a partnership there, then. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I mean, I don't have the best sense of it. I, I still think our defence is slightly weak compared to our attack. Mark Ball is incredible. Ryan Curtis is fantastic. I'm hoping for big things from John Patanama. Let's just have a look then at 
how we compare to the rest of the league. So our average age is going up, but we have signed a few young players this year. The average age is now 22. It's three years below the, the, the league average. Uh, David Okoye, our oldest player now, he's 25 years old, but he's still pretty young for a goalkeeper, and he's almost made 400 appearances for the club. Let's just have a look at the comparison then. So goalkeeper-wise, not bad. Their command of area one-on-one's a little bit weak. In fact, I'll just turn my face off so you can see everything properly. Defensively, I mean, there's some very weak things there. Pace-wise, it's heading and tackling the worst in the league, but everything else, it's okay. Midfielder-wise, there's nothing that is the worst, so that's good. We've actually got the, the ninth best stamina and the sixth best tackling. Let's be positive. Attacking wise, we've got the, the second best finishing in the league and the ninth best off the ball. We, we should be able to find the back of the net with the strikers that we have physically, acceleration pace. We are the slowest team, interestingly. But remember, our stri uh, Mark Ball is fast, so we can rely on his pace. Aggression wise, well, you know we're aggressive. So many yellows and red cards last year. We need to watch it in this league because. Be, oh, being a team that's probably going to finish towards, towards the bottom of the table mixed with bad discipline could be a disaster. So what do you think then, guys? Best transfer? I suppose John Patanama is the obvious answer, but maybe Joey Curry will solidify our defence. I know there's no exciting strikers this year, but we've got plenty of strikers. It's a position I don't think I really needed to improve. I mean, if there's a player that I can get on loan that is just exceptional, then I won't say no, of course. Also, let me know, where do you think we're going to finish? I know it's really hard to tell at this stage, but what does your gut say? What's your instinct? Do you think we're finished towards the bottom of the table? Do you think it will be a struggle? Or where will we be the surprise package again in this division? Let's hope so. So our first game of League One will be at Plumbing Park against Exeter City, who unfortunately we have lost against twice. Both games against them we have lost. And also, unfortunately, we're without Dickie Strutton. Now, I thought he'd served his suspension those three games, but he must have had an extra game added on for just how violent that tackle was towards the end of that season. So he misses out, as does Gareth Hancock. So, Passmore is going to make his competitive debut at right back with Joey Curry at centre-back, playing alongside Lucas Long. We're going to give that partnership a go. Adrian Burrows has stayed at the club, despite the fact he's now only on a non-contract. I've been desperately looking for a better left-back, and no one has wanted to join. I've not been able to get anyone to, to come on loan, convince anyone to come on loan. There's players that are choosing National League teams over me in League One. Why? It's just ridiculous. <sighs> Unfair. Uh, Samuel Cini may drop into left back this season but Paris was really good last year so although defensively he's not the best going forward he did really well despite the fact he does look pretty poor to be honest but we've got to give him a go he deserves to stay there Parry Miles is going to play in the halfback role because Strutton's out with Brazil ahead of him and Wayne Burns it's not Wayne and Wes on the wings right now it's Wayne and John <laughs> on the wings, John Padanama, and of course the, the incredible duo that is Mark Ball and Ryan Curtis up front. So this is the journey that Exeter City made over to Winchester today then for the opening day of League One. A massive day for Regen Rovers and League One, how exciting eh? Looks like a fairly full stadium, the flame pit are buzzing for this, the Exeter fans have all turned up. The Exeter team then, Hornby up front, Frazier Hornby, I do like a good Hornby. You know, the, the train set. I had one when I was little. I've still got it. It's in the loft. Good old train set. On the left, Leighton Mitchell. He's fast. He's good at dribbling. Ooh. Uh, Chato on the right. Uh, Crawford playing behind. Now, Exeter, I think, are predicted to finish ninth. Uh, they're a decent team. And we want to avenge what happened last time. Whatever. I don't know, I don't know what happened last time, but we lost the game, that's for sure. Now, the tactics... We're going attacking. We're going for it. We're sticking with what was working at the end of last season. This is what we're doing. I don't see any reason why to change things. And no, at the end of last season, we were a little bit iffy. It didn't quite work. But I think it was... Oh, I think it was the game. I, I think it was the game. Trying to make it as difficult for us as possible. Perhaps a cautious approach would be better or balanced. But the Regen Rovers way is to attack directly. Oh, we've won a corner, which Wayne Burns sticks into the mix. And oh, offside Lucas Log, unfortunate. It was a well-worked corner. Because rather than passing it short, let's have a look at this again. Wayne Burns whipped it into the mix. So Brian Curtis with his height. <sighs> Lucas Long offside, that's unfortunate. Free kick to Exeter City. Taken short. Here comes Kane. 
Back to Mitchell, crosses it in. There's an open man. Hornby headed away by uh, Curry. Long clears it. Joey Curry, what a name, eh? I'm sad to see, the, see a lot of our, our legends and icons leave, but we have to be a bit pragmatic. I've hung on to some of the players that are basically on non-contracts that don't cost as much at all, like Ray Rig, Forks, uh, Agu. We need to hold on to Agu. All-time top goal scorer. Oh, look at Mark Ball go. That was sensational stuff. And it's through to Ryan Curtis. And he puts it wide. A glorious opportunity. Oh, he beat the defender. It was only a half chance. I think the defender kind of put him off. That is that is annoying though. That could have been that could have been the first goal for us in League One. Here come Exeter though. Half an hour in, Campbell Rice to Crawford, out wide to Lacey, into Campbell Rice again. They're being patient. They're looking to pick their way through our midfield and defence. But our two attackers, Ball and Curtis, are primed and ready. That's crossed in deep. Chato, easy save for David Okoro. Still our captain, still our goalkeeper. And he is, I forgot to say, he's club captain now. That Marcus Higgins has gone. He's moved up from vice captain to, to captain. And who's our vice captain? I need to check that one. Pass more with the cross. And offside again. Two offside goals. John Patanama thought he'd scored his first goal for the club. He thought he'd scored our first League One goal. But it's offside again. Pass more with... It was a great cross, but yeah, it's well offside. They played the offside trap beautifully. Yes, our vice-captain, I remember now, Mark Ball. He's actually got 11 on leadership, which is okay. I mean, Okor is a long way down the list looking at this. But I can't make Joey Curry captain straight away as coming into the team. And I think having that familiarity helps. I don't know what you feel, feel about having a goalkeeper as a captain. But I think it's probably better than a striker. However, Mark Ball is a striker, but I think he can lead from the front when he's when when Okoro isn't on the pitch, which will be a rarity, hopefully, as long as he doesn't get injured. And hopefully he doesn't lose form as well. We've done all right so far. We could be 2-0 up if things have gone well for us. But here's Ryan Curtis. He's through again. Ryan Curtis. Curtis hits it over the bar. 6.4 for Curtis. In fact, most of the team aren't playing that well. They've had a lot more possession and shots, but we've had the highlights. However, that wasn't a clear-cut chance either. We've only had one half chance. I'm going to say I'm pleased. I am pleased. I think we're doing all right here. We've, we've held our own. I know we're at home, but this is a team that's expected to finish in the top half of League One. And we're doing really, really well, I think. First highlight of the second half. Joey Curry's after that. Calm and collected. Into Burrows. Barry's knocks it long to Mark Ball. Oh, here's Mark Ball. Come on. Yes, it's our first goal. It seemed to just go through the goalkeeper, but I'm not complaining. And Adrian Burrows with another assist. He got 13 last year. Joint top assist with Ryan Curtis. And he's just lumped it. I mean, it's right-footed lump over the top. Mark Ball, he's not even having to run that fast. And he's just hit it. But what is that? I mean... The keeper, <laughs> if that was a core, I would not be happy. But we're 1-0 up. Magnificent. We deserve that, I think. And here's Mark Ball again. If we can get a second, that's a cracking ball over through to Curtis. He's missed chance after chance. That's the second clear-cut chance. Oh, Mark, Ryan Curtis. I'm going to bring on Grant Hunt. Scored quite a few goals last year. 11 goals, I think. Third top goal scorer. Half an hour to go. They're on the ball now. We should we should be winning by more than one goal. We might regret this. Here's Hornby. Easy save for Okoro. think this is when we need to... I don't want to invite pressure on. I think we'll go balanced. We don't need to distribute quickly. Now, the midfield ratings are pretty shocking, aren't they? Perry Miles, 6.5. He's, he's held his own there, I suppose, as the halfback. I've, I think I'm going to bring Brazil off for Gus Awusu. Play him as a box-to-box. Pass more of a throw in into the box, headed away. Oh no, where's the man in the middle just waiting for the ball to come out? That is awful. And now it's two on three. Chato, are they going to cut their way through? They are. It's wide though. We're going to bring on Wezona. Patanama hasn't done, we haven't seen him do much. He scored that offside goal. 6.4 is not the best start for him, but he's just getting used to League One football. We'll let him off. Uh, we're going to time waste. Can we hang on? for an incredible opening day victory against Exeter, a team we haven't beaten so far. There's a few minutes to go. It's whipped in. It's over everyone. It's through, but it's offside. Another offside goal today. This is insane. Is this offside? Oh, 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 oh. That is as tight as you can get. I think the red line 
just st- a smidgen ahead of the yellow line. There's a few seconds to go. I think we're going to hang on. Although I shouldn't say that, should I? The ref's just going to kick us in the balls. No, he hasn't. Yes. We've won. We've won our first League One game. And Mark Ball, he had to be the, the winning. He had to score the winning goal, didn't he? But Ryan Curtis, disappointing display from him. We'll have to keep an eye on him over the next few games. Hopefully he can move up to League One level. Lucas Long, 7.5 from him. Adrian Burrows, the assist. I'm defensively very good, I suppose, overall. They didn't look that dangerous. Oh, that is magnificent. What a way to start the season. Only one goal, but uh, three points. That's what I wanted. A good old Mark Ball. One goal, four key passes, two dribbles made. Superb in front of goal. The keeper did help him out a bit, I suppose. So the next few games, we've got Fleetwood, Notts County, Bristol City in the League Cup, but they're also in League One now. Coventry City, Grimsby Town. So yeah, we'll, go, we'll, we'll do a video around about here. But yeah, we'll end it there. Thank you for watching episode 82 of Regen Rovers. I hope you're looking forward to the 10th season. It's a great start, but let's not get ahead of ourselves here. It could all go wrong. It's, it's just a, it's a very good start, but it, it might not mean anything. Until next time, enjoy FM19, enjoy the rest of your day. Come on, you younglings. I'm pumped. I'm pumped for League One.